I'm going to start my story out on the golf course, and uh, I started itching big time, and uh, I started turning yellow, and I went to uh, the motion picture hospital, and uh, they they uh, did a CT scan real quick, and uh, they, by the time I drove home, uh, the results were already in, and they were calling me saying I had to get back down and... Um, have more tests. Uh, I needed to uh, apply to UCLA Medical Center and get in the system, and that was quite difficult. It took about a month or so, maybe longer. Um, when I went down to, got in the UCLA system, it was about this, I did a ERCP, some sort of endoscope thing, and they they found that uh, my bile duct was clogged and uh, and they didn't know why at that time and so they sent they they uh, actually that's not how it worked was it <laughs> my bile duct got clogged up um, but they didn't know why and uh, oh my gosh <laughs> This is called chemo brain in action. Anyways, the bile duct got clogged, and um, they put a stint in there, and then they wanted to figure out what caused the bile duct to clog. So then I went down and hooked up with Tim Donahue, and uh, was very fortunate to get him. I tried to get into this surgeon, but uh, I couldn't see him. I, I was able to see Tim. and. Um, I felt like he was selling cars um, by the time uh, I was trying to figure out if I wanted him to do this surgery on me or not, which was the Whipple. Um, so in this diagnosis, um, it, they said I had pancreatic cancer. And um, the bad news was that it was stage four. Um, the first time Tim, Tim tried to do the Whipple surgery on me, uh, he went into... Uh, inside me and um, I was completely out of it for a while but they stopped the surgery early because uh, the tumor had metastasized into my liver and um, when I came out of it um, I was told that I didn't have many options uh, but to try to do some chemotherapy and they hooked me up with uh, the satellite office in Westlake uh, uh, Dr. Ashuri, and he put me on a, a chemo regimen for about six months of um, Fifornox and some other cocktails that I was doing. And um, one time I had gone in there and um, um, I went into the office one time and um, after uh, I think I'm messing this up somehow. I did this Whipple surgery, and um, and during the Whipple surgery, when I came out of it, uh, so it had metastasized into my liver, and I'm doing the the chemo. And <laughs> And anyways, the nurse comes in and shows me that um, the chemo results had completely shrunk all my tumors off, off the chart, uh, off the CT scan. And um, it was about, uh, they were about two millimeters, had shrunk down to about two millimeters. Um, so Tim was able to, Tim Donahue was able to go back in um, well, actually, they had a meeting with other doctors, and a bunch of them thought I should do more chemo, but uh, Tim decided to do a second attempt, a sep second Whipple surgery. And uh, when I came out of that one, he was uh, very excited because uh, all the, uh, all the, um, what are those things? That the, the lymph nodes and all the, uh, the pathology report that showed there was no evidence of disease in my body any longer. It had completely, he was able to cut out the, the cancer at the head of my pancreas and 
along with a lot of other things, the whole bile duct problem. And, um, and it was in, I'm not sure how many lymph nodes, but all of them came back and there was just no evidence of any disease in there. And I promise you, if I ever I'm invited back here again, I'll, I'll be a little more prepared for this. <laughs> Let me summarize the, the situation because really what Mr. Maloney went through is very, very unusual. So he had the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer made and looking at the x-rays suggested to Dr. Donahue and others that this cancer ought to be resectable, removable with the Whipple operation. And so the patient was taken to the operating room. Dr. Donahue opened up the abdomen and was starting to do the Whipple and then realized that there were some things in the liver that were concerning. And so he took them out and sent them to the pathologist and they were cancer. So it wasn't apparent on the x-rays that had been done before the operation that this tumor had already spread to the liver. And under those circumstances, we don't typically do the Whipple. So this was the first operation. And then Mr. Maloney had chemotherapy for a number of months. Yeah, and I think months. eight months or so went by and there wasn't any evidence that there was anything that had developed in the liver or anywhere else. And Dr. Donahue said, well, maybe we should give this another try. Maybe that was the only tumor in the liver and that there wasn't anything left anywhere else except the tumor in the, in the pancreas. And so at the second operation, he really did have the Whipple because Dr. Donahue couldn't find any evidence of disease anywhere else. This is very, very, very unusual. And uh, this is so-called stage four disease where typically we don't do the Whipple operation. But in part, I wanted Mr. Maloney to present his circumstances, the story of his operation, to give some hope to those people who talk about the fact that they have stage four disease and th is there anything that can be done? Every once in a while there is. You hear me? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I would like to, I would like to say, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to curl up and uh, just give up. Um, I had, um, and I'm glad that um, the therapist was here to talk about mind, body, and spirit because it was a critical time when I was facing death that uh, you start to question which way you're going after death and life after death. And um, I really chose to put my faith in Jesus Christ and realize what kind of righteousness I could step into was his righteousness and re his redemptive power of healing that was possible with the help of all these medical people. And um, I've really been blessed all along the way. Um, throughout the time of uh, one chemo to the other, I, I had a, a, a wife that also was experiencing cancer and she died. So it was a very stressful, uh, period in our, in our lives where we both had cancer at the same time. And um, I didn't really have uh, a, a lot of places to turn to. And this one guy, I was at a Christmas uh, ceremony once, and this one guy came up and he said, I'm really praying for you that um, that you can have a complete recovery and all this chemo, I mean, all this cancer will come out of you. And... Um, I thought, what audacity for the guy to say that, you know. And I did um, end up putting my faith in God. Um, and it, it um, I'm not saying everybody's eligible to heal when they believe. I'm saying he did chose, choose me, though, to um, for his purpose to still be eligible for all these doctors to work on and to give everybody else here hope. Thank you, Brooke.